On one show after another, you see pundits looking into the camera and proudly declaring Donald Trump is the biggest loser. It stopped being clever after about the 15th time. They're talking, of course, about this massive and rather dense New York Times report on President Trump's taxes, most of this going back 20 to 30 years ago uh, and acting as if this is absolutely, completely, totally shocking. Now, I'm not here to defend Donald Trump's business practices, but the fact of the matter is, and I know this from uh, reporting I've, I've done in New York, if you're a real estate developer, the tax code is just filled with loopholes, perfectly legal loopholes that sound outrageous to people like you or me who are lucky to get a little bit of depreciation on a house if we own a house or uh, other kinds of losses. Uh, but it was hardly a secret that Donald Trump was writing a lot of stuff off or that he was at times losing money. Here are the particulars of the Times report if you haven't had a chance to plow through it. Uh, they didn't have the president's actual tax returns, but transcripts of IRS statements. I guess these are sort of summaries without all the uh, appendices and things like that. Looking at it from 1985 to 1994. And the Times writing on this basis that in 1985 alone, Trump reported losses of $46 million. $46 million from his core businesses. These are largely the casinos, hotels, uh, rental space in apartment buildings, and that sort of thing. Year after year, uh, he lost more money than any other individual American taxpayer, according to the Times' estimate. Uh, the total for that decade, that 10-year period, over $1.1 billion. So the president lost a lot of money. I have no trouble believing that. We already knew, obviously, that he had these Atlantic City casinos, which I reported on at the time. He once got mad at me when I called up and asked about the financial health of what was then the Trump Taj Mahal, uh, that they all went bankrupt. We knew that he bought the Eastern Airlines shuttle between New York and Washington and Boston, and, it went, and he had to unload it because he was losing money on that. So some of that was not a secret. Obviously, there's a lot more uh, detail here in the Times story. Um, inevitably we get the Trumpian tweet in response. And it's fascinating. It's a fascinating look at the president's psyche. Real estate developers in the 80s and 90s, uh, more than 30 years ago, were entitled to massive write-offs and depreciation, which would, if one were actively building, show losses and tax losses in almost all cases, Donald Trump says, sometimes considered tax shelter. That's right. You would get it by building or even buying. Uh, you always wanted to show losses for tax purposes. Almost all real estate developers did and often renegotiate with bank. It was sport, he says. So he basically goes through this and says, you know, I did, I did it, I did it, I did it. It was perfectly legal. Everybody did it. I did it. And then the last line, the very old information put out in, in a high, is highly inaccurate fake news hit job. So it's true, it's true, it's fine, it's no problem, but it's not really accurate. Uh, but the president does make some points there. Now, is it embarrassing for him? Uh, would he, did he want the public to know? Uh, that in many years, eight out of the 10 years, the, his losses, or at least on paper, were so great they didn't pay any taxes at all as far as the Times reporting. No, I'm sure he didn't want to know that. Did he want uh, the public to know that uh, over the course of that decade he lost more than a billion dollars? No, I'm sure he didn't want the public to know that either. But there's no uh, hint in this. In fact, the Times itself says uh, it doesn't really change the narrative about Trump. There's no hint or suggestion that uh, he broke any law, violated any regulation? Was he an aggressive use of a tax system that's sort of built to let builders and developers and branders like him uh, uh, take a lot of tax write-offs as incentives to get building going? Yeah, uh, he was very aggressive, but there's no law that says a, a businessman shouldn't have to do that. So here's why I think this doesn't move the needle very much. Uh, bottom line, as they say in the accounting world, um, all the people who like President Trump are going to say, look, he still was a pretty successful mogul 